my goodness. That just killed you, didn't it? Uh huh. <laughs> you had to remember, huh? I tried. I don't want to go to Tennessee. Well, I do eventually. I want to be. I want to go to Nashville. I want to live in Nashville, or near it at least. But maybe my retirement. Yeah. Whenever that happens. That's why it's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Had trouble. Had trouble t telling them the coffee order, huh? Do you have trouble? You look young, though. No, I wish. I wish. Mm. Trying to lose some weight. That's a good Halloween. Yeah, I'm trying. I just don't like walking by myself. Yeah. And I got the dog, but it's like, I, yeah, the dog loves walks. But it's just like getting the energy after work to go do it. Yeah. That's the thing. Being a walker. Maggie does, Maggie does the same thing. Yeah, Maggie does the same thing. She, she takes you for a walk. Yes, I am. I practice thir I practice Thursday night. We'll see how it goes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. We start the I said we start the sixth, I guess, or the night the sixteenth. Oh. Singing, yeah. singing, but we're practicing. Oh, she's gonna wow. she's gonna do it every other week. Oh. So oh, that's good. Yeah, so we're gonna start singing every other week, starting the sixteenth. So right. we got some songs. You have to see Claudia to get some music. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to United Methodist Church of Hornell. We're so happy to see so many faces this morning. It's a special week with our 50th anniversary coming up. I wanted to see if anyone has any announcements. I have one quick one. We are going to postpone the Bible study after church today for the adults just so that we have time to convene and talk with one another. There's a lot of people from the past here and people that are new here, and this way we have an opportunity to talk and see the pictures and all of that. And we will resume again next week right after church. Um, anybody else? Um, I'm going to go on, Karina. Um, our children's church and our Sunday school for children and youth are still happening today, even though the adults are um, taking the day off for fellowship. Um, but I'm... Um, 
asking for prayers for Club Can Do. Um, I am scheduled to pick up the registration forms on Wednesday to get the bus request to the bus garage. Um, so this is getting very real. We start a week from Friday and we are still in need of some leadership. Um, if you, if God is calling you, or if you know of someone who loves God and loves children, we need a Bible storyteller. We need a music leader. We need an assembly leader. We need snack helpers. Um, and uh, we know that God will provide for his ministry. Um, but Boy, am I happy when I know who he has provided. So <laughs> please be in prayer, and thank you so much. And while she brings that microphone up, I have another announcement. Our small group did decide we're going to meet every first and third Tuesday of the month at 730. So if anyone wants to join us, that will be this Tuesday at 730. And we have a small text group going on to figure out exactly where we'd like to meet each week, just to get together and fellowship together and do life together. Go ahead, Trina. Sorry. That's okay. Um, I just want to thank everybody that came out for the meeting for the Autumn Fest. Um, it's going to be October 22nd. We still need a few volunteers to work the day of and some volunteers to help set up. Um, I have flyers out in the NARSAX with a sign up of all the businesses that we can um, put in flyers in. So if anybody would like to take some flyers and hang them up and advertise for us that would be wonderful thanks anyone else okay well we're changing our pattern a little bit this morning and so at this time would everyone greet each other in christ's name Just as a reminder, anyone who doesn't want to be on video, don't face the back. I forgot to announce that this week. Okay, as we all make our way back to our seats. As we make our way back to our seats, would everyone join me in the call to worship? Please stand if you're willing and able. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases?
please join us in our hymn this morning. If please remain standing. This week, we are celebrating our 50th year anniversary. It's very exciting, and we have a couple of people that are going to come up and share some information with us all about that journey. Um, we're going to have Watson Walden and Kim Wood. Uh, Watson, would you like to go first? Or you can both come together. Didn't that music sound wonderful? Gene asked me to come forth and give you a little talk about the building of this church. She only gave me five minutes, so if I talk over, Mr. Goodown back there will have somebody usher me out. So I'll hurry. Now, it was in the 1960s when Urban Renewal planned to build a four lane highway right up through the center of Hornell right through the middle of our church. So in the fall of 1967, we accepted their proposal to purchase our building site for $185,000. We seem to have other property around worth $52,669, and 
And we had to take the lawyer's expense out of that for 16,500, so it netted us $221,169 for the selling of our old church. And it was getting old, and it was costing us a lot of money to keep it going, so probably in the long run, it was a good thing. In 1968, a question was asked, where do we go from here? A planning committee was formed to determine if there was a possibility of the other Methodist churches joining us, but this plan fell short in 1970. We, it bothered me, I guess, more than anybody else because if we could all join all those three churches at that time, what a powerful church we would have been for the community. We'd have had the manpower, the woman power, and all, everything to, so we could contribute a lot back to the community and we could have had a full-time youth director and all of that, but anyway, it fell short. So the next thing, we had to form another committee and we'd decide where we're going to build the building. Well, there was a man around town by the name of Larry Hills and probably a lot of you knew him. He was a, a, a part-time car salesman and he could sell you a ice cream cone at the North Pole on the 4th of July anytime. <laughs> so he was wandering around here one day and this, saw this man out in the middle of this field. And he stopped to talk to him and it happened to be Mr. Leland Beish. He owned this property. And we offered him a deal of $18,000 for, for the land and he agreed to that. And we filled out all the necessary, necessary papers took them down to our attorney. And two or three weeks later, Larry again was walking around. Mr. Bache was walking around out here in the field. And he, Mr. Bache was really upset. He, he, said to, he said to Mr. Hills, he said, I am through with you Methodist. He said, you don't know what you're doing. You're walking around your heads buried in the sand and you don't know what you're going, so I'm taking the property off the sale. Well, Larry settled him and got him all straightened out. And then he came rushing down to my office, said, Watson, we gotta get to the lawyers, immediately. So I said, okay. So up the road we went to Mr. Schultz's office and here's our file located in the middle of two stacks of paper, you know. Lawyers always like to have a stack of papers around to look busy. So anyway, we got that out and we signed everything we needed to and Larry took it back to Mr. Bache and he did accept our offer. And then here we are. So now we've got to build a new building. So another building committee was formed. And the only ones left on that committee to this day that I know of is James Dexter. He was representing the youth of the church at that time and you could See, he could still recognize the youth of the church. <laughs> and Don Besick, who was, well, a lot of you know, was a music director up at the high school. He was up, moved on up to Rochester, and he's still alive. So there's only two of them left of that committee. And this committee worked very hard, and finally, they had to pick out an architect to, and he, they found an engineer from Niagara Falls by the main name of Mr. Mole. And then we selected uh, C. Files Construction Company was hired to be the contractor. This was improved in 1961 at a cost of $260,000. And along came some additional expenses of another $15,000, which brought us up to $275,000. Well, later on, you know, if you've ever built a building, you know what happens. Another $100,000 was secured from a loan from the Stuman Trust Company, which brought the price of this church up to about $375,000. I always remembered, remembered it at three hundred and fifty, dollars so something in between. And now these stained glass windows, beautiful windows. Of course, you know me, I'm a... I do not like a debt. Now I used to argue with Larry, I said, Larry, we cannot afford these stained glass windows. I cannot do it and I'm not gonna sign it. And Larry says, okay, Watson, quit your foolish worry and I'll take care of it. 
So he did. He got the pledges from the members of the church and all the money funds from Hornell, and he got the money for these brand new beautiful churches, <laughs> windows. And I did have the pleasure of meeting with a young couple from Canada that designed these windows. They were a wonderful young couple. And I often wonder where they are today. They were from Canada and they had uh, migrated from Europe someplace before that. And then we came to the color of this church, the arches and the ceiling. And we had a meeting one night. And, well, before that, we had told the contractor, do not touch these ceilings till we decide what we want to do. So we had our meeting. We walked in here and looked up in this peak, and here's the stain, the color. Well, you know you can't change the color of the stain. So we said, what in the world are we going to do? I think we're all thinking about the lighter color. Well, we discussed that for a while, and for some reason, maybe it was an act of God, I don't know. I've often thought about it later. But the night before, I was just thumbing through a magazine at home, and I saw a picture of the, almost like this room, with these arches and this ceiling, and I'll be darned if the ceiling wasn't staying the same color, and the arches were that, were that color. So I showed that to the committee, and they said, well, there's nothing much else we can do. So that's the color we're shown. That's how it comes in color. And I kind of like it myself. I think it's better than my <laughs> color. So Bud Phillips is back here. He's, he was a carpenter when this building was being built. And for myself, I don't give myself much credit for anything. All I had to do was sign papers. I think I signed enough papers to fill an evening tribute, and every time we turned around, there was a paper to sign because I was the chairman of the trustees at that time. Now, thank the Lord, we're, we're, we're here, and uh, it's cost us a lot of money, the improvements we have made over the years, but now we are in good hands. The trustees are in good hands. Don is the chairman of the board. Dave Weaver is, is the vice, vice chairman, so two of them together is keeping the rest of us pretty busy. And then uh, it was in uh, 1972 when the cornerstone ceremony was held. And in October the 1st was the first regular meeting. And here we are today. And we have many more improvements to make, and I'm sure they will because the building's in good hands of Don and Dave. Thank you very much. You know, I'm, you know it's 50 years later when I can't read or see or hear or anything else. <laughs> so I was a youth back when we came here. I was a youth in the old church, which, um, which was bittersweet when it was closing, but um, as a teen, we were kind of excited to have a new modern building and all that. So 1972, October 1st, I was 16 years old, soon to be 17. I was a senior at Hornell High School. We were so excited to be moving into the new church. We had been sad, but it was bittersweet because this was a modern church. Chairs, no pews. The choir was in the loft. This was all new to us. And our altar and the podium and everything could be moved around. We had a lot of services in the round where this was in the middle. Um, many Easter's, a few Christmas services. I remember directing the little drummer boy in the round and that was pretty cool. Um, a lot of weddings were in the round. It was pretty cool to us, because we were teens. Our youth group, um, MYF, was really large. We, it wouldn't be unusual to have 30 kids here on a Sunday night. Um, we just had a great group of youth in this church, and we, a lot of us are still friends 50 years later, and we keep in touch. I remember we sold corn. We had a cornfield. We sold corn, we sold Christmas trees, we helped with dinners. We helped with a country fair, which was two days back then, which is now the Harvest Festival. I remember the time, we, were, we had booths outside and we ran games. One year we had a horse, and the horse escaped, and we had to chase a pony <laughs> down the road, and we caught him, but we were never allowed to borrow the horse again. So, um, 
Let's see, but most of all, in 1974, we had a lay witness mission here, and many of us youth, I know there was at least 10 of us, accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord here in the round. It was in the round. It was in the round, and um, we had um, a lot of great youth leaders. We had um, the Stantons, and then he went in the Air Force, Alan and Luann, and they moved. And then we had Mylene and Jim. If these walls could talk, but I can't, I can't, you know, I can't say a lot of the stuff. No, I'm just kidding. But they were really good. We, you know, we went to Silver Lake. We went on trips. Um, I was also very blessed because I met my husband in this church. He was older, but he would come and visit, and sometimes he'd come to NYF stuff that was going on. So I got married in the church in 1976, and whenever we'd come back from Rochester, we'd, we'd always worship here. Um, I also, sadly, I also had his funeral here. Um, he died in 1986. But, um, so it's got a lot of memories, this building. Um, then I moved back here in 87, and we came back to Park Church back then. Um, and we tried some other churches throughout the years, but then um, I wanted my faith to grow and everything, so I... You know, I had to venture out and go to some other places. And then, but I returned to this church um, and started getting more and more involved. Um, I've gone through many trials in my life. My family has too. But one thing that there is for me is my church family. I know as a young child, I thought that the church is not the building. We were taught the church is not the building. The church is the people, which is true. But to me, this church, our modern building is like home. When I walk through the doors, I feel at home. So 50 years later, this teenager never dreamed she'd still be attending this church in Hornell, New York. So happy anniversary to this building, which will always have a special place in my heart. And thank you, God, for placing me where I never dreamed I'd be at this stage of my life. Have a good day. Thank you, Watson and Kim. Some good memories. Um, I'm not on the I'm not in the bulletin today, but I do have a couple things I'd like to speak to you about. Um, first of all, uh, unbelievable! I got an email about two weeks ago from Louise and Al Hall. Reverend Howe was one of our past uh, pastors. And in that email, they were seriously considering coming the 1,200 miles from Florida to be with us today. And as you see, his name is in the bulletin. But unfortunately, a hurricane happened. So they are sending their love. He says, Louise and I have much to be thankful for with Hurricane Ian making a visit, but not hitting us too hard, thank heavens. We are going to have to cancel the visit as we have cleaned up and we would have to contend with the uh, Ian again on the way north. Have a great celebration. We are disappointed and sorry to disappoint you. We were looking forward to it and getting to see all of you that we know and love. And that's from the house. Um, the other thing, I, one thing before I finish here, uh, one of the people that belonged on the, the building committee and um, had a very important part because he was the treasurer, and that was Art Judge. And Barb, his daughter, is here today to help us celebrate. So thank you for coming. We also have, oh, excuse me, you want to clap? <laughs> um, <clears throat> we also have a visitor, Danny Welch. And Danny was in our youth group, and that's probably about all I'm going to say. <laughs> Danny could be, yeah, he could, he could be, let's just put it that way. But Danny, we're so glad you came from Rochester to help us celebrate. Um, <clears throat> and of course, we've had some other people that um, have helped us through and been our pulpit supply and our assistant pastors. I would like to recognize... Edwin Jakeway, I know you're here. Please stand. Thank you. 
Edwin has filled our pulpit several times and also has just been a good friend and part of our family. Um, <laughs> the other one is Terry Kelly, but I don't think I see Terry. Uh, Terry Kelly was an assistant pastor with, uh, with Al Howe and uh, went on to get so he could preach in the other churches. And this next lady, she got us through Pastor Lenny's cancer treatments, and she was here every Sunday. And Betty Holden, I would like you to stand, please. And of course I can't, you know, say thank you to all these people without saying Pastor Beth, who, who is with us. So. And so glad she agreed to preach today. We'll begin uh, with the joys and concerns now, and I understand that uh, if you have a need, um, you raise your hand and uh, someone will come to you with a microphone and you can uh, share with us before we go to prayer. Um, I'd like prayers for the family of Steve Weed. Um, he passed away and he was a good member of the great member of the community and to one of our members here at the church, um, Howard. He was Howard's advocate, so keep him in your prayers, the family. I think we need to pray still, continue to pray for the people in um, Ukraine. Uh, and also, now closer to home, we need to pray for all the ones who were through this hurricane. Um, just when you see the devastation, you just thank God for your own blessings. Um, so anyway, and also along with the disaster, we do have uh, UMCOR, which is strictly from the Methodist Church, and the money that you give to UMCOR goes directly to the site. It doesn't go for administration or anything else. It just goes to those that need it. So I would encourage you to think about that. I also have a joy. Um, I'd like to thank everybody here that um, sent prayers up for my daughter, Lexi, when she had her concussion. Um, she is doing much better. Um, she is still off, but she is improving. So thank you for all the prayers. Uh, I, I have a joy that all of my family in Florida and South Carolina are safe, had no damage. And, um, and I also have a stepdaughter that's in the hospital down in South Carolina that they think she's had a stroke. I have a concern. Uh, five of my grandchildren that grew up here they was in North Carolina, so Charlotte, they're all doing fine. Nobody was hurt. But they grew up here doing everything, a little bit of everything. I'm a little bit further away from home. I'd like to ask your prayers for the people of Pakistan. Um, if you get in your mind what... Um, I, this, the, Ian has done in Florida multiply that. A third of the country was covered in water to your chest. Um, and their buildings were much less permanent than ours, and so a lot of them got washed away. So a lot of people are still uh, suffering and dying. There's yet still um, people without adequate food and water. So I ask your prayers for them, even as they're recovering slowly. There is also just less government support and, and assistance so there's not FEMA and other organizations rushing in to help. So please keep them in your prayers. Uh, 
um, praises for a wonderful vacation in Tennessee, but um, prayers uh, for my cousin, Marty Benzis. When we got home, we learned that he had passed away. The calling hours are tomorrow. Just prayers for the um, McCormick family and the Pre families. Thank you. Um, I have a joy. Um, this year will be 27 years um, since I haven't had my grandparents on my dad's side in my life because they passed away, but all of the memories that I have of them as a child growing up was in this church so I just am grateful that I am here as a descendant of Gilbert and Carmela Carlton and just celebrating the 50th year anniversary is amazing to me so it just hits close to home Well, as we go to prayer, I'm going to come down here and kneel at the kneeler because uh, that's what I'm comfortable doing as we go to prayer. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord, it's been a, a very difficult week for many people in our country and beyond. And we pray today for the family of Steve who passed away. We ask you to continue to strengthen those in Ukraine, be with their president as he continues to lead them. We pray for those in Florida and in the Carolinas and the east coast of Georgia who experience uh, Hurricane Ian and uh, are just uh, really having a difficult struggle. We thank you for our United Methodist Agency, UMCOR, where we can send our donations and know that 100% of what we send is going to recovery efforts. Be with Lexi, who is recovering from a concussion, and we're glad to hear that she is uh, improving, but still has a ways yet to go. Dottie's family are all safe, safe and we are um, blessed to hear that. But we pray also for her stepdaughter, who we hear has had a stroke. We pray for this family where all five children who, who are living in South Carolina in the Charleston area are safe. Sometimes we uh, are stretched to remember people uh, in places that we sadly don't know much about. And we think today of, of Pakistan, where one third of that country has been flooded, where the structures are not as strong as the structures here for the most part, and there are people that are in need of our prayers. Help them, Lord, as they struggle to recover. We thank you for uh, this dear sister who had a wonderful vacation in Tennessee. But we also hear that um, Marty has passed and we pray for his family. And Lord, we, many of us have uh, connections to this church or, or we wouldn't be here this morning. And I thank you for the a uh, young woman who shared about her grandparents being members years ago. And it's hard to, for me to imagine, but um, I left this church 14 years ago. 
And today it is uh, just a wonderful blessing to be able to come back and see so many familiar faces and also new people that I, I've, that I do not know. And I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to, to be here today and help Amanda lead worship. We thank you for Alan and Louise Howe and all the other pastors and their families who served this church over the many years since 1972. And we um, ask you, Lord, to um, help us never take our history for granted, but to be interested in, in knowing uh, not only where we come from, but um, more about this wonderful church in which we worship and are blessed. Lord, let us join together now in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it's time for us to uh, receive the offering, and so if the uh, ushers will please come forward. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this opportunity to return a small portion of what you bless us with. We thank you, Lord, that for the most part, we are blessed. When we look out around this world and around this nation, we have so much to be thankful for. 
And as this church moves forward from this 50-year anniversary, may you guide and direct the pastor and this church's leaders and congregation that you would give them a new vision for the future and help them, Lord, to know that you're with them. You're with us every step of the way. Through Christ we pray. Amen. We're now going to sing um, a hymn, passes, Pass It On. Um, Alan was going to sing a song for us this morning, but we know that he and Louise are still in Florida. So uh, let's stand as we sing Pass It On. Please be seated. Jenny Harrington is going to come now and read the first scripture lesson, which is Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Good morning. I'll be reading from the King James Version, and in my Bible, it's titled, To Holiness, Charity, and Humility. And again, it's uh, Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so do ye also. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. This is the word of the Lord. Our section, second scripture lesson is found in Acts 3, 1 to 11. And um, I'm going to ask you to please stand if you're able. And you can follow along on the screen. Um, I'm reading from the New International Version. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put there every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John, then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let's pray. Lord, we have just heard two scripture lessons. And today I'm going to speak on Acts 3. I thank you for the words that you have given me. And I pray that you will speak through me, that your word would go forth this morning and accomplish what you desire. Holy Spirit of God, move among us now. Touch our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits. And bring us this morning whatever we need, whether it would be healing or some sort of release or forgiveness or a, the knowledge that we are your children, a loving touch, acceptance, and the list goes on. For Lord, you know us better than we know ourselves. Through Christ we pray, amen. Well, there's so much going on in the world that drags us down. Amen. And I, since I retired just over two years ago, 
I have really taken on the, the bad habit of watching too much news. And sometimes I just have to just turn off the TV for most of the day because it's so easy to get sucked in to that negativity. But today I want to share with you my message that's called The Taylor Made Miracle. Because God is still in the miracle making business. Amen? Amen? God is aware of everything we need to live an abundant life. As I just said in my prayer, God knows our deepest desires, our needs, and our long-awaited answers to prayer. I'm sure some of us have been praying for years, maybe decades or longer, for something to happen in our lives, and we're still waiting. But we need to keep praying because God's timetable is not the same as ours. And we, like this man in our scripture, may wait a long time for God to answer our prayers and act on our behalf. Some of you from my time here 14 years ago may recall that I collect cardinals or redbirds. For many years I have done this. And about 10 or so years ago, I recognized that often when I asked God for a sign that he had heard my prayer or that a situation that I was concerned about would work out, that God was involved in this, a cardinal somehow would make his way across my path that day. I have been driving down a two-lane country road and seen a cardinal light for a second on the emergency lane next to me, next to my car. I've had cardinals fly right in front of my windshield as I drive down the road in the city. Cardinals have flown um, and landed in bushes outside my windows. And about six or seven years ago, you know those bleak days of February where you just can't get enough energy to do much at all. I decided, you know, Lord, I have not seen a cardinal for months, and I would love to see a cardinal today. I'm having difficulties with a couple of my family members, and I would just like to know and just be reassured that everything is going to be fine. The definition of the word miracle is an event that appears inexplicable by the laws of nature and, is, and so is held to be an act, or, act of God or supernatural in origin. That's a mouthful. Let me say that again. The definition of the word miracle is an event that appears inexplicable by the laws of nature and is so held to be an act of God or supernatural in origin. So that February day, the most amazing cardinal sighting happened. I kept looking out my picture window at the Tyrone Parsonage that faced Lake uh, Lamoka, and looking at a big tree in the yard, you know, just as I walked by, looking out and seeing if there might be a cardinal. And about 3.30 or 4 o'clock that afternoon, I thought, well, God, I've prayed and waited, and I, I guess I'm probably not going to see my cardinal today. So I sat down on the sofa and turned on the TV, And a minute or two later, here comes my cat down the hallway from the bedroom, and he stops at my foot, and he drops a silk cardinal on the floor. 
And I'm like, what? I got up, I went running back to the bedroom because I knew exactly where he got this cardinal. And I had made a flower arrangement many years before in all the, my mother used to design, designate colors for each of her five children. And I made a flower arrangement with all the different colors represented. And I had put a little silk cardinal with a wire and, and, twi and twined it around one of the branches. And I expected that arrangement to just be obliterated. It wasn't even moved. Now how Simba, my cat, got that cardinal detached from that stem, I'll never know. But that event was inexplicable by the laws of nature. So I said, thank you, Lord, thank you. You've heard my prayer. We read of a miracle in the lesson this morning from, again, Acts 3. The man who was healed had been lame from birth. And each day he was carried to the gate in front of the temple where he could beg for money. And on this particular day, Peter and John were walking by, and the lame man stopped to ask them for money. The disciples of Jesus did not give the man money. They gave him something that he did not ask for, nor even anticipate getting. Peter said to him, silver or gold I do not have, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. Taking his right hand with a firm grip, Peter raised the beggar to his feet. At that moment, his feet and ankle bones became strong and steady. I um, received this clergy robe many, many years ago, probably, I think, in, in 1998, as a gift from my parents when I graduated from sem seminary in Atlanta. And in order to um, have this made, I had to go to a local Cokesbury bookstore and have one of the employees there measure me. I mean, my shoulders, my arm length, my, the, my height, my girth around here. I mean, she took so many measurements because this robe, even after all these years, and my weight, as many of yours, has gone up and down over the years, but this robe has always fit me to a T because it's custom made for me. And in the same way, God will bring us custom made miracles. The one for the beggar that day was custom made. God knew exactly what the man needed and brought Peter and John to be a conduit of healing in the name of Jesus Christ. They did not heal that man of their own power. Jesus Christ was the source of power alone. So why is the healing of this beggar so important? First, it shows us that it, as Christians, we must pray in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ because he alone has been given authority over heaven and earth. Jesus is the great physician who heals alone, but certainly at times heals through others. Secondly, it's important to note that the lame man was healed outside the temple gates. With the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, just the previous chapter in this, uh, in this book of the Bible, the risen Lord was now the center or focus of God's activity rather than the temple, temple proper. Prior to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, 
the dwelling place or manifestation of God primarily dwelt in the temple. But now with the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the people at Pentecost with tongues and flames of fire, things had changed and the power of the Holy Spirit now dwelled in the hearts of the believers, giving them this Holy Spirit supernatural internal power. Thirdly, the healing of the crippled man displays God's love for all people. Peter and John did not have any money to give him, but they gave him what they had to give. They shared their faith in Jesus Christ and his healing power. What did the three do immediately after the healing? They walked into the temple, the man leaping and jumping and praising God. All the people saw him walking about and praising God, and they recognized who he was. He was no longer the crippled man who was ignored by those who passed by him, but a restored individual. And fourthly, the most wonderful outcome of this miracle for me <clears throat> is that the man who may not have been allowed to enter, enter the temple because of his deformity or maybe because nobody took the time to carry him inside was now able to be united with the community of faith. The shunned outsider was now greeted warmly as they all ran up to him and crowded around him. This beautiful miracle brought not only healing to his body, but it also restored in him, uh, restored him to his temple, his faith community. Well, my final illustration is a miracle that happened last month on September 14th. The same cat that brought me the cardinal several years ago was due for surgery. He had formed a cyst on his, on his back and it was there for probably at least six months and it was causing him pain and discomfort. And being a 14-year-old cat, the vet that I take him to in Dundee was was quite apprehensive about uh, operating on a cat that age, but we both knew that he needed, he needed to have the surgery done. So a couple days before, I put out on kind of my personal prayer chain, um, please pray for Simba because he's going to have surgery and I want to make sure that he comes through the surgery safely. Um, with a good result. So the morning of the 14th, I put him in his carrier and uh, secured him in the back seat of my car and drove the hour or so to Dundee, uh, carried him into the vet's office, and after a minute or two, uh, the veterinarian, the, the doctor, uh, summoned me and Simba back in the, in the little room, and we went back there. And she said, well, I'm going to do a, a pre-surgery exam before we, we take him uh, back to the operating room. And I said, fine. So she takes him out of the crate, and she starts moving her hands around his lower back. And she's like, well, it was right here. I know. I know it was here. Wasn't it right here, Beth? Wasn't it like a little lump about the size of a BB? I, I can't find it now. I, I, Will you look and see if you can find it? We both rubbed that cat's back every which way. And finally she said, I have no explanation. It's just gone. And I said, I know why. I said, I'm a retired United Methodist pastor, and I put Simba on my prayer chain a couple days ago. And... I've had many people across the country praying for him. And I said, this is not the result I expected. 
I just, I asked for prayers for a safe and successful surgery. I said, this blows my mind that this, that this cyst is absolutely gone. And that's another example of receiving a miracle when you don't even ask for it. So, if you're waiting for a tailor-made miracle from God, turn to God and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and his authority in your life. Surrender your will to his. Trust in his wonderful grace and wait for him to work in God's appointed time. Amen and amen. Well, let's move to the Sacrament of Holy Communion now. And uh, if you will pick up a hymnal, please, and turn to page 12. And as I go through this, um, one thing that I did not acknowledge earlier, and I want to thank um, the worship committee for the wonderful visuals they've uh, displayed today, because it's World Communion Sunday, and this is a Sunday when we recognize that churches all over the world are celebrating communion this day as we are. We have the, the globe and the grapes and the wheat, the cross, of course, and uh, as we go through this, I'll be using my litany for World Communion Sunday, so there'll be times that um, the words that I'm speaking are not going to be in your hymnal, and, but you'll, uh, you'll be able to follow me. So our invitation states, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Would you join me? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one one every nation and people to live on the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we together proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout this world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Would those who are helping me today please come forward? Bread in these, or thank you.
Shall we bow? Lord, we thank you for the privilege of coming to your table as your children. We thank you for just the opportunity today to receive the bread and the cup and be filled by your grace. Acknowledging, Lord, that you forgive our sins over and over again. And for that, we are grateful. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm going to sing you the benediction. And this is a little verse written by Don Besig and Nancy Price. It's called Go Now and Pass It On. May the Lord walk beside us as we leave this quiet place. For the Lord will always guide us if we walk in the light of his grace. May we feel God's love around us as it keeps us faithful and strong. For the peace of God surrounds us and now we must pass it on. Go now and pass it on.